Hello everybody. Today is January 1st, 2016. Today we're going to discuss how you can change and turn your life around if you are struggling. So first I would like to say, reintroduction from my intro video, that What you get in life is based upon your perception and your actions based upon your perception. Your perception determines all for you, including the age-old question, what happens when you die? In the current age we live in, in the current epoch, we, when we die, we will literally become what we perceive ourselves to be. Our souls are what we perceive them to be. So if you perceive yourself to be good, and you think good thoughts, you'll basically get the bliss promised in the Bible. But if you are naughty, and you think negative thoughts, and you have a negative perception of the world, you'll then have those negative perceptions rebounded back onto you after death. So it's very important not to wait to improve yourself. Improving yourself should be a task undertaken every day. And I'm not here to tell you who you are and what you need to improve on. That is for you to know. You may share it with others, but ultimately it's your responsibility and it's your knowledge. Basically, you need to think about how you perceive the world, your everyday thoughts. Which more? You need to break into your subconscious mind. So the thoughts below the surface. Of course, you thought you start with your conscious mind. And by starting with your conscious mind, you make an effort to think about things a little bit more positive each day. The ultimate emotion is unconditional, universal, true love. If you can feel that every day of your life, you are indeed blessed. That means love everything and everyone. That does not mean you have to agree or give in to everything or everyone. What it does mean is that even if someone wrongs you, you have to understand that ultimately they are harming themselves way more than you ever or her. If you are standing up to somebody with your convictions and they decide to harm you, that's their fault, not yours. By holding a grudge, you allow the harm they did to you to linger. The Christian Christianity teaches forgiveness. However, they, I do not hear a lot of explanation of the dynamic of why you need to forgive. So I'll give you a little bit of that. When you hold a grudge, you're clinging to that negative experience. Forgiveness is about letting go. Of that negative experience. When you hold on to a grudge, you hold on to negative emotions within yourself. You allow, if you hold a grudge to the end of your days, you allow the negative thing someone else did to you to become a permanent part of you. So, it's very important 
that you learn how to let go of a grudge. Now, a simple psychologist trick would do the trick just fine. You can simply imagine your mind so all the thoughts. If the thought feels negative, don't even think about what the thought or what the attachment is. Because the key is to let go of negative attachments and then form positive ones. And then to keep faith that even if your kindness is not returned by that person, the laws of karma, which are indeed true, will repay that kindness back onto you in one way, shape, or form. It may not even be by a person, but somehow the universe and God will manifest that kindness back at you. Same thing goes if you do something negative. If you do something negative, that negative thing will come back at you at some point in your life. You'll notice the people who cling to obtaining money and think money equates to happiness are misleaded beyond belief. And I'll explain why. Money is a tool, nothing more. It is actually fictitious. Our dollar only has value because people perceive it to have value. It's not backed by anything. But it's worth a dollar because we perceive it to be worth that much. And because so many people perceive it to be worth that much, it is worth that much. But if people stopped thinking of dollars as valuable, that value will decline and it will be worth nothing. It will just be a piece of paper. Might as well burn it in the fireplace at that point. But basically, money does not buy happiness because money is a tool. It's not a tool to which you can do anything other than materialistic things. However, happiness does not stem from material possessions. I had to learn that the hard way. When I was in high school, I was nicknamed by my teacher the Uber Capitalist. While I believe in free markets, I also believe that they're being manipulated these days. I'll not go into that here in this video, maybe in a future video, but the important thing to remember is happiness comes from love. Universal, unconditional love. Universal, unconditional love is the key to obtaining true happiness. And if you allow yourself to feel that emotion, that emotion itself is bliss. But it means you have to give yourself to everything. It sounds kind of like a paradox, but it's not. In fact, all paradoxes can be solved. All a paradox is, is something that the comprehension for it or the knowledge to unlock the paradox. All paradoxes are puzzles. You need to expand beyond the paradox to understand how it's solvable. Now, happiness is bought with love, but buying is not exactly the right term. Basically, you give people love and you will receive love. If it's on a credit level with that person, you'll receive it somewhere else. In fact, being optimistic, despite whatever goes wrong, is actually a very easy way to obtain happiness. If you're always positive, always look at the bright side, because everything has a silver lining. I've been through traumas that have given me post-traumatic stress. I've been 
when I was a kid. I was beaten by people who were supposed to protect me, not my family. In a time when I was most vulnerable. I do not regret experiencing any of these hardships. Nor do I regret any of my childhood traumas or anything bad that's happened to me. Because even though it took me a while, even though it took a long, hard journey, I have learned a valuable lesson from each and every bad thing that has happened to me. And I was able to transmute those bad things into good things make myself the positive person I am today. Basically, what you need to do is just think positive thoughts. You manifest your reality. What you perceive yourself to be is what you will become when you die. If you perceive yourself to be good, and you can't be good unless you perceive yourself to be good. And not a false perception built upon lies, but truth. The confirmable nature of truth makes it absolute. You can lie to yourself as much as you want, but every time you tell yourself a lie, you're only harming yourself, and you'll have to overcome that lie eventually. It's simply about learning about yourself. In your explorations. And through those inner explorations, untangling all the negativity that's built up. You cannot take any of your material possessions with you when you die. They're simply here. It does not mean you do not enjoy your material possessions, but it simply means they're only temporary. And even in our life, most of our possessions will be temporary. They will not stay with us our entire life. It's important to understand that the only thing you can take care, take with you, and take care of, and protect absolutely within your power. The only thing you can keep, the only thing you can absolutely protect, but it will take work, is in here. But the contents of your mind is what matters. And through the contents of your mind, how you act on that information. Thinking good thoughts is not enough. But you must start by thinking good thoughts. Positive thoughts. Start out by thinking about everyone and everything you love. And kind of capture that emotional wavelength. Because in reality, everything in reality is vibration. Everything. Even matter. Scientists can consider it to be energy, but energy is vibration. The sun's light is vibration. My words right now are vibration. And your thoughts are also vibration. If you perceive yourself to be separate from God, and just a human, you will never know his blessings. If you perceive yourself to be one with everything, and in fact we are that, you will start to know God. However, I must say it like this. This will sound like a paradox to some, makes sense to others, but this is the summation of above and below, as above down below. This is my explanation of it. Simply as, all is one, one is not all. Meaning, everything that exists is one thing. However, one, as an individual piece of that whole, is not the whole. So we are one, but we are not all. But all is one, meaning we are part of the whole. 
because we are part of the whole, connected to the whole, intrinsically in our very being. Everything is connected. We have something that's sacred. The perceived disconnect between divinity or God and man is an illusion. We are simply a piece of God, simply a single piece. But as a single piece, we are separated because we live in this physical reality. We have a perception, we have thoughts, and we perceive ourself. But then there's the greater self. You see people like Isis. Isis is pure evil. They take a religious teaching, Islam in, in the case of Isis, and then they twist it. The type burning someone alive, I saw the video. There's nothing more horrible. Then, not only murdering someone in a heinous way, but doing it as a political statement. Would you kill yourself in that way? Because in a larger scale, that is exactly what you do when you kill somebody. You kill a piece of yourself. But the difference is, you don't feel connected to that piece of yourself. Basically meaning, that is, if you don't perceive yourself as connected to someone else, it's easier to do something to them you wouldn't do to yourself. But treat others as you would treat yourself, basically. If they do not treat you the same, forgive and forget. Anything people do to you that's negative against you, forgiveness may seem like the weak way out. That's what I thought when I was younger. I thought forgiveness was something for weak people. A strong person will get justice. However, ultimately, by clinging on to that grudge, by going after revenge for any wrongdoing against you, you cling on to what they did to you. You allow it to hurt you further. Every day you hold on to that grudge, because a day longer you let that wrong that someone else committed against you hurt you. If you forgive, it will no longer plague you, weigh your soul down. Basically, forgive. Forgiveness is the way to let go of wrongs from other people. But you must also learn to forgive yourself. For universal, unconditional love does not just apply to everything around you, outside of you. You must universally love yourself as well. If you can truly align to universal true love, unconditional universal true love, you will find it's not hard to be righteous but it takes lots of work, day by day improving your thoughts. I recommend meditating. It'll be hard to meditate at first if you're not practiced at it, but it's just one of those things that requires practice. Simply just sit down or lie down. Pick one thing you want to focus on. Close your eyes. And feel yourself. Be aware of yourself. Every aspect of yourself. And with that one focus, just kind of let go. But keep the focus locked in your mind. Kind of set that focus there. And then lock that in your mind. And then just let go of everything else besides it's not that thought. If you want to do more of a Restful cleansing. Don't pick anything to focus on. 
and just let go. You'll notice you'll be have better emotional health if you meditate and better physical health. You'll function at your optimal levels. I'm not saying you have to meditate for many hours like the Buddhist monks. Most of us don't have time for that. What I am saying is, by doing so, you clear your mind. It's about resting the mind so that you may think clearly. It's not uncommon for after a meditation session, a good meditation session, you will have epiphanies that were, you couldn't get before. Like you find the answers for yourself. You just were out of grasp. It doesn't matter what you meditate for. What matters is that you meditate in a positive way. Basically, I'm not saying that money is bad. Money is a tool. But understand that it's just a tool. It represents value, yet materialistic value. When you meditate, you're not meditating to materialistic things. Meditation is about connecting with your spiritual self. And everybody has a spiritual self. Just watch and see for yourself. In reality, you can become whatever you want. If you perceive yourself to be an angel, it is inevitable that you will become an angel, for example. I have a lot to discuss about angels, actually, in some future videos. But what you must know is society, at least here in America, has become nothing more than a conditioning system producing good members of society. But what we deal with here is a crisis not a crisis that everybody perceives as a crisis, but a crisis of thought. People do not think for themselves. They're afraid to think for themselves. Most people I see on a daily basis, they let others do their thinking for them. The news, the news is nothing more than propaganda machine these days. It's hard to get good news. It's not all news, of course, but the mainstream channels, for sure. Fox has a reputation, but CNN's the same way. So is MSN. They're, the news focuses on negative things in the world because that's what gains views. Remember this, because if people, if they're focusing on all the puppies that are being born, all the uplifting things, well, that doesn't captivate people's attention the way the negative does. The negative horrifies. So the news will put you consistently into a horrified fascination. That is the wrong model which we must base ourselves. True knowledge comes from within. And basically, exploration of yourself. Most people do not know themselves. They're not aware of themselves. Beware of not thinking, lest others do your thinking for you. I'm not trying to do your thinking for you. I'm trying to share the truth. And the truth is, you are the complete captain of your entire reality. Prayers are always answered. However, not necessarily in the way you would think. And you need to obtain the wisdom to see how your prayers are answered. 
basically the mir they call it the miracle of God. It is the miracle of God. And, how, and they say God works in mysterious ways. If you pray to God for something, that prayer will come true. Maybe not when you want or how you want, but in some way, shape, or form, it will manifest before you. And it's important to remember, you pray for a nice crystal. It's not necessarily going to be given to you a person. You may see it lying on the ground in nature. But that's just as much your prayer being answered. You don't see it. You didn't accept your, the answer to your prayer. You simply have to accept what is given to you, but you have to see what is given to you to accept it. And that's where wisdom comes in. I'm 23 years old. But being 23, I've also been through a lot. And I had to learn it the hard way. I focused on the wrong things first. And have to turn the lesson the hard way. Hopefully, you will not have to. However, you must realize an important thing. If you take anything from this, your perception matters. What you perceive is your reality. If you perceive yourself just the rot in the ground because it's a purely physical universe in your mind, and you die, you will literally rot in the dead or ground and be dead. If you perceive the truth that people live on, you die, you will live on. If you are an intensely negative person, and you die, you will become the negativity that you perceive. If you are a positive person, and you die, become the positive person that you perceive. Also, it doesn't just happen after you die. It's not about this whole life preparing for when you die. These things will manifest for you in your daily life. You just have to have an eye to see them and faith to believe them. Basically, God is all. And understand that wisdom. And it will make you wise. Basically, your thinking determines your reality. It's miraculous. And if you focus on something, you attract it to yourself, the law of attraction. If you focus on the negative, and only the negative, you will draw that very negative that you're trying to avoid to you. If you fear something and, get it and focus on your fears, you will manifest that fear. Your mind is a computer a command prompt, like a terminal on a computer. Every thought is a command. The more you think a thought, the stronger it will manifest. Basically, if you focus a lot on something, it will manifest stronger. However, it doesn't mean it will manifest automatically for it. Everything requires work. So you have to work for what you manifest. Pursue it avidly. Perseverance is the key to getting what you want in life. And yet, you're never giving up. Never deem something impossible, lest you will make it impossible for yourself. Anything is possible. You just have to believe and stick to it. Perseverance. Anyways, I hope you took something from this today. May you have a wonderful day, and God bless you all. Amen.